What's up your people this is Prashujay Biswas and thanks for tuning into my channel. Let's continue with our atomic structure lectures on chemistry. And today this is going to be a very short video on which we will discuss about the drawbacks of Rutherford model of atom. If we discuss the drawbacks of the Rutherford model of atom, he stated that the Rutherford new the Rutherford model of atom stated that it is a small scale nuclear system with a nucleus acting as the sun as a massive sun and the electron be similar to the lighter planets we know that according to newton the gravitational force that was applicable was equal to f is equal to g into m1 m2 by r square where g is the gravitational constant m is the m1 is the mass of the nucleus m2 is the mass of the electron and r square is the distance between them this is the gravitational force the same way coulomb described a force called the coulombic force which is a which was the electrostatic force of attraction and that f e was equal to k q1 into q2 by r square where k is the coulombic constant 9 into 10 to the power 9 q1 is the charge of the nucleus q2 is the charge of the electron r square is the distance between them so using this similar uh, coulombic forces it was said that it moves in the classical planetary mo model when classical mechanics is applied to the solar system it shows that the planets describe well defined orbits around the sun and so in the similarity also if the sun is considered to be the nucleus and the planet as the atom it should move in the same direction but however when a body moves in this kind of an orbit it accelerates in the center direction with an acceleration which is called the centripetal acceleration of v square by r so we can say that even in the planetary motion the body might be moving in a uniform velocity around a circle but still has an acceleration towards the center as v square by r according to the electromagnetic theory of maxwell who described that a charged particle always releases some kind of electromagnetic radiation but they can only release such electromagnetic radiation if they are accelerated if it moves with an acceleration of a then there is some kind of electromagnetic radiation that comes out of it this was described by maxwell in electromagnetic theory now if we move in the certain in that way only and we describe uh, the atom like we have this atom here of a circle okay uh like we have this atom here and we have the nucleus in between okay we have the nucleus in between now we also have the electrons here like this and they revolving in this direction now we know that the electron has a charge of e the q is equal to e therefore when it is moving in this direction then it has some acceleration towards the center and this acceleration is v square by r where r is this distance here this distance here is the r therefore it is accelerating so there has to be some kind of electromagnetic radiation that is coming out right so when this electromagnetic radiation is coming out the energy also uh, is carried out by the electromagnetic radiation therefore this electron is also losing some energy it is losing some energy in the form of the electromagnetic radiation and when something loses energy it starts to lose its velocity so what will happen actually is that if we uh, make its pathway in a violet color then it is slowly it starts to decrease its uh, uh, radius in order to increase the potential energy to keep the uh, the energy constant and with a spiral path in some time it will seriously land into the nucleus and that's what's going to happen so that should have been happened according to the electromagnetic theory now if the electromagnetic theory is considered to be right then this would happen but if the classical mechanics is considered to be right then the electron may have moved in the right direction but we know that both these theories are right so a confluence of this theory led to the 
similar explanation that this electron has to go spiral in and hit the nucleus. Calculations show that the electron would only take 10 to the power minus 8 seconds in order to do that. But we know that the atom is stable enough to last for uh, say the time billion of universe. But this does not happen. Thus, the Rutherford model could not explain the stability of an atom. If the motion of the electron is described on the way of classical mechanics, an electromagnetic theory, you may ask that since the motion of the electron is orbitally leading to instability of the atom, they, then why not consider the electron as stationary around the nucleus? So, there is a con the concept of the question of why it is not stable around the nucleus comes from a very basic fact that if the nucleus is in between and there is our, uh, our electrons here, then a simple electro a simple electrostatic attraction will pull the electron towards it without any spiral motion. Right. So at the end it would consider it to be a miniature uh, miniature let's say model of our JJ Thompson model because this all will get inside, all the electrons will get inside and this will have a positive mass above which there will be electrons like this. Right. So this will be a miniature JJ Thompson at, of model of atom. But this was not only the serious drawback of the Rutherford model of atom. Another drawback of the Rutherford model of atom was the electronic structure of atom. That is, how the electrons were distributed in this circle. So if we, cons we are considering this atom and if the nucleus is in between and there is some electron here, let's say at this position and at this position and let's say we also have an outer nucleus, then how many electrons are to be there in each uh, orbit of motion? Because he told that each orbit of motion referred to an energy level. So if there are two electrons here, then how many electrons are in the outer of outer shell? Or if there are three electrons here, then what about the rest of the electrons? So that is what was the serious drawback of the Rutherford model of atom. So in all, he could not explain a lot of facts and that led to the new model of atom called the Bohr's model of atom which was a direct consequence of serious quantum mechanical theories.